that's what's happening. Here in Ohio, uh, the weather is still very lousy. Rain, 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 rain. The yard is a mud hole. And this week we deal with uh, the passing of my dad and his funeral coming up here. Uh, very, very busy. But as I reflect back, you know, on my dad, uh, he was a very well-liked man in the community. But as a father, he was very structured, very rigid, fundamental, conservative all the way. Uh, the guy that was at church every Sunday. And uh, he imposed uh, all of his beliefs, everything, on us kids. So we there's five boys in our family. Of course, when I grew up, there was four of us. My youngest brother uh, just came into the picture about the time I moved out. And I'm going to talk about that time uh, here in a little bit. But um, my dad, I, I guess, if anything, uh, he instilled a, a good uh, work ethic in us. Uh, he always had us busy doing chores and, and doing things around the yard and, and helping him out. And then as soon as we were old enough to be able to operate a, a lawnmower, a push mower, uh, we were uh, set up with jobs mowing lawns for all the little old ladies in the neighborhood. Now, we lived in a rural area, so in order for us to get to these places, we had to get on our bicycles and ride sometimes many miles to get to the lawn that we had to mow, spend a couple hours there pushing a lawnmower, and then ride the bike all the way back home. So it wasn't easy. And it wasn't anything I would choose to do, but that was kind of imposed on us that you're gonna learn how to work for a living and you're gonna earn your own uh, way around here. Eventually, I earned enough money that, you know, I, I told you in an earlier story that my brother and I split the cost. We bought a, uh, a Honda 70 mini trail, a little mini bike, off of one of the neighbor kids. Uh, and it was in, like, mint condition. I don't know why the guy wanted to get rid of it, but, but we got a pretty good deal on it. 500 bucks we paid for it. I don't know what he paid for it, brand new, but it was in really good shape when we got it. As I got to be a teenager, though... Uh, it was getting to be quite much for me to be around the house. Uh, my dad enforced uh, his way of dress on us. We were only allowed to, to wear certain uh, types of clothing. Uh, he cut our hair. It had to be his way. Uh, we were not allowed to be individual in any way, shape, or form. It was all in his mold. And that and then the very strict, rigid... Uh, regime of of work 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 all the time busy busy there were you know I mean yeah we had time to play we had plenty of time to play but there was a lot of I, I felt that it was a lot more than what the other kids in the neighborhood had to do of course everybody's got their own story their own cross to bear but that was mine anyways but as a teenager then I took my savings and I bought a Yamaha 175 Enduro it was a, a, you know, enduro, you could ride it on the trails, but it was fully equipped for riding on the street, too, with turn signals and a headlight, and, the, and the, it was, I had it uh, licensed, and, and I got my uh, operator's permit, too. So I rode that thing on the trails, but I, I rode it everywhere. And it came to the time when I had to get out of the house. I, I had to leave. So I had a, a job at that time. I, I had actually just landed a full-time position with the park system. And I was on a maintenance crew, so, you know, we emptied trash, we mowed grass, and, and it, was, it was just labor. And one of the guys I worked with had recently gone through a divorce, a young guy. Uh, his marriage didn't last very long. And he had moved into a low-income apartment on the south side of Akron, Ohio, and he asked me if uh, I'd like to uh, uh, move into the extra bedroom he had and split the rent with him, 50-50. Well, that sounded like a great idea to me, so I packed up all my stuff, uh, lo loaded my bike up. Now, back in those days, I had a, a rack that clipped onto the bumper of my car. I had a, a 66 Pontiac Tempest. 
and the, the, the steel racks that the wheels would fit in for the motorcycle just clamped right onto the bumper and then I could load the bike onto the back of the car and I took it with me over to the apartment and moved in with this guy. Uh, he and I got along pretty good. We were co-workers, so we were able to carpool to work together, taking turns back and forth. But it was, like I said, a low-income slum, and it was in a really bad neighborhood. So I couldn't leave my Yamaha sitting outside. I had to bring it in the house. Well, there was a few steps to go up and a little landing area, and then I could snake it into the kitchen. And I would leave it kind of parked, you know, somewhere out of the way in the kitchen. And my buddy was okay with that, but my buddy was very OCD. I mean, really over the top OCD. His apartment had to be spotless all the time. Don't get a drink of water and leave the glass sitting on the kitchen counter. You had to wash it and put it back in the cupboard when you were done. Now, I was smoking cigarettes at the time, too, so... If I were to put a cigarette out in the ashtray and, and set it on the, the table next to me, uh, he was quick to grab that ashtray, empty it out, take it over to the sink, wash it, and then set it back down next to me. <laughs> it was that bad. He was completely OCD. Now, one day I was kind of working my way up the stairs with the bike to get it into the kitchen, and a uh, police officer came driving by, and he stopped, and he got out of the car, and he said, Son, are you putting that in the house and I said well yeah just for a few minutes here I gotta do some stuff and I I need to to you know yeah and he says because I didn't know what he was gonna say but he says you know that that tank is full of fuel that's very explosive and these apartments have you know gas water heaters and stuff so I'm just warning you you may not want to keep that bike in the house it could it could take out this whole block of buildings <laughs> so I was like yeah okay you know whatever and uh, I proceeded then after he left to put the bike in the kitchen well my buddy and I had a long day's work and we came home from work that day carpooled and as we arrived home, we unlocked, unlocked the door and walked into the, to the kitchen. And right away, the smell of gasoline hit us. I mean, it was so strong, it literally burned our eyes. And here it was, the whole kitchen floor was a pool of gasoline. Somehow, the float on the carburetor for the motorcycle had stuck. And it had just, the carburetor had just drip, 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 dripped all day long while we were at work. It had never ever done that before so I don't know what caused that to happen but at any rate we were panic stricken knowing that if the water heater came on the, uh, even there was a pilot light in there even and that was around the corner in a closet. So we opened up the windows, we opened up the doors, and we just started mopping up that gasoline with everything we could find and getting it outside. Of course, it took the finish off the floor, and my buddy was pretty much upset beside himself that, uh, you know, it had made such a mess, and we had to uh, reseal or rewax the floor so it was shiny again. But that was a lesson learned, and from that day on, I still had to park the motorcycle in the kitchen because if I would have left it outside, it would have been gone in one night. It was that bad of a neighborhood. You don't leave anything sitting outside here. I would turn the gas off. I would turn the, the petcock all the way off so there was no way it was going to leak anymore. And uh, then we were really vigilant about keeping an eye on it from there. That's the story for today. Luckily, it didn't uh, escalate into an explosion that leveled the whole bank of apartments there. Whew. Well, we'll get through this week, and we'll move on ahead. Hopefully, uh, the rain stop here in Ohio. It has been so soggy, so wet. I can't wait to get out and do some riding. Uh, we had a ride this past weekend to do but the temperatures were in the low 40s and it was raining 
so we opted not to do that and I don't even know how many people showed up for that ride because of the extreme weather conditions were were not very uh, suitable for riding at all hopefully it dries up the sun comes out and uh, tomorrow will be a better day so till next time cats ride hard